pose so nice that you say them twice. <laughs> I feel like that was offensive. Was that offensive? No, I don't. I didn't see I, unless I missed something. I don't know. Ho hos. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Got to get some pimp pimps in here to <laughs> get them in line. Okay. Oh my uh, god. <laughs> You got to get the pimp pimps to uh, <laughs> abort. <laughs> Aborting the joke. Where's uh, where's the eject button here? There it is. There it is. Uh, pimp pimps in the house. This is oh, so Jesus. fucking Hello and welcome to the Old Boys Podcast with your hostesses, hostesses, Mm, that sounds wrong, Jared. Like Little Debbies? Yeah, like Little Debbies. But they're not Little Debbies, they're hostesses. And that's Dan. (laughs) He's the other hostess. hostess With your Little Debbies, (laughs) Dan and Jared. Because then it's like you have a host and you have a hostess, which is, that's like a female What's another snack food that we can name ourselves? So you have hostess, you have Little Debbie's. What else? Pepperidge um, Farms. With your Pepperidge Farms. <laughs> I heard Milano they remember cookies. a lot. Yes. They're good at remembering. Like elephants. I don't... Was that Pepperidge Farms? Pepperidge Farm remembers. Oh, yeah. You're right. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, yeah. This is a show, uh, if you weren't aware, uh, we uh, review movies. Whoa. What a cool and interesting and totally original concept. I know, right? <laughs> It's the most original thing. I'm so surprised that somebody hasn't capitalized on yeah, this yet. Yeah, how has nobody done a I mean, we're not even making money from this. Before. I'm I'm yeah. pretty sure that we could make money from this in one way or another. Uh-huh. But, you we know. could definitely do some branding, yeah. you know. We are the only people who are doing this. Easily get a sitcom. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, other people are just stupid and we're how really smart. How fucking weird is that? I'm sorry. What? Mark Marin has a sitcom Uh-oh, about out. making his podcast. Let's go. And Let's it's an interesting thing, and people watch it and love it. How well, can his, podcasting his get podcast that interesting? His podcast is super entertaining, apparently. You, you know why I think people like his podcast? Is because That's Mark they Maron know. was an asshole when he was younger, mm-hmm. and he pissed off a lot of people, and then he would invite those people onto his podcast, and then oh. they would like talk about their issues. I see. He does that a lot. Like, because I, I used to listen to it, and it was like every episode, he would he'd be like, "Yeah, this guy, me and him, uh, when we're all coked up, uh, he didn't like me, and <laughs> now I'm gonna have him on my podcast." <laughs> it's just like it's basically should be called Mark Marin pissed off some people, and now we're gonna talk. And he what? had the president on his podcast, as in, not this president, <laughs> the good one. <laughs> no, he had Obama. Well, yeah, Obama, Obama was on, on Between Two Ferns with Zach Galifianakis, and what? that was an amazing episode. It's my favorite episode of Between Two Ferns. You know it's what? I fantastic. think I have seen that, actually. It's That's so good. That's fucking nuts. Like, but no, yeah, Mark Maron. There you go. His podcast is good. Politics aside, he was in on the joke, and he realized how stupid they were acting. Yes. It yeah, was yeah. great. <laughs> that's pretty great but yeah that's that's one way he literally revived his whole career mark Marin, from that podcast he totally changed it that's cool. and this has been the mark Marin <laughs> talking about mark Marin podcast podcast well we um, like to review movies right yes no we like to review mark Marin. you're getting confused yes. i'm sorry <laughs> Can that's, we our, that's our sister show <laughs> that we like to review movies on we like to talk shit about people who are Way more Much better than us, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm saying is I feel like, you know, on on a scale of one to super interesting, uh-huh. uh, podcasting would not be good for sitcoms. Anyways, so, I feel like we went way too off topic. Yeah, well, <laughs> let's get back on topic by getting off topic again. Oh, um, Jared, you yes. told me. So this uh-huh. this game that I uh, love called mm-hmm. Dynasty Warriors, they came out with a new game, Dynasty Warriors oh. 9. And oh. if um, you think that you're a fan of Dynasty Warriors 9, uh, stand down because that is my <laughs> turf. 
<laughs> and you can't like it as much as I do. I will not allow uh... it. Anyway. <laughs> so you asked me to take a report of the day I went to go buy it because I took a day yes. off of work to go get it. And just let you know exactly what it had happened. What had happened time. was. What had happened. So, because you're saying, like, I want to know how many people are going to be there when yes. it first opens. I want to know who is there for the midnight It wasn't midnight, because GameStop doesn't do midnight reveal anymore, <laughs> which is kind of disappointing, because I really wanted them to. That would yeah. be the one game that I wanted them to. Anyway, so I get there at 10 o'clock. I actually get there okay. at 9.50. They're not open yet. I wait around mm-hmm. till like fucking 10 o'clock. I wait for 10 minutes and they yeah. still don't up. I'm like, all right, fuck this. It's the day before Valentine's Day. So I go to Publix. I need to get some things from, you know, for dinner that night. And then I'm like, all right, I'm going to get Michelle like some candy, some, um, some cards. Mm-hmm. So I do that. I go back maybe 25 minutes later. There's a car there that I saw before. And I saw it yeah. whenever I came back. Mm-hmm. And he was just then, so they didn't open the fucking store for like 15 minutes after they were supposed to open it because he was still in there getting it. Because his mission was to get Dynasty Warriors 2. I know this because Uh. of what has transpired. So (laughs) the first two customers at GameStop were this guy and me. So I come back from Publix about 20 minutes, so so about 10 20. And I see him walking out as I'm walking up to it. This guy. If you okay, podcasting is he not bought a visual, every single no, copy. <laughs> this guy, of Dynasty Warriors, is, podcasting man. is not a visual <laughs> medium, but I will say that I am, you know, a little rotund. You know, mm-hmm. I have I have some baggage with me. Uh, I would say an <laughs> above, emotional ab- and physical, <laughs> a, a, an above average body. I'm about like, uh-huh. you know, hundred or not hundred, two hundred. <laughs> Some you, weigh, you weigh a, a, a 200, slim 200. A, a, gentleman's, <laughs> a gentleman's 230 is what I weigh. Yeah, so I'm a pretty big guy, but okay. I'm not the biggest. This uh-huh. guy, maybe 1,500 pounds big, 50 pounds bigger than me. 1,500 maybe. pounds bigger. 50, <laughs> 50 pounds bigger than me. Jesus. And he has the same length hair as I do. Okay. The same length beard as I do. He's not a redhead. He's a okay. brown head. Oh, brown head. Classic brown head. And <laughs> he's walking out. <laughs> And I don't see what he has. And he gets in his car. Now he waits. Because it takes me about like five minutes to get my game. So I get it. I get out. But I, I'm, given, I'm given I'm <laughs> given a I'm given a sec a second case. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Like it came it, this, uh, here's the game and there's this case. I'm like, is this the soundtrack, soundtrack? of the game? Because I yeah. love Dynasty Warriors music. It's my favorite mm-hmm. music ever. It's just awesome guitar and shit. So I I'm like, oh, I, I get really excited. So I walk out of the GameStop, and I don't want to show my excitement in front of the clerk. Uh-huh. So I'm like, I'm going to get in the parking lot. I'm just Before I even get to my car, I'm just going to blow my load and just open it up there. See if I get the time <laughs> crack. And uh-huh. I didn't realize that the guy who was there who before me, he's still in his car pulling out. So as I pull it out to open it up, it reveals nothing. There's nothing in this case. It's just a collector's edition case. It's a pretty damn cool case. For you mm-hmm. to put your game in. But there's nothing in it. I'm like, oh, it's just a collector's case. So this guy who's pulling out on his way out rolls down his window. He's like, that's <laughs> what I came for too. And I'm like, yeah, because he was basically me in 10 years. <laughs> because he had to be 40 years old. <laughs> so it was a little depressing because he and I, so two people who look almost exactly the same, <laughs> are the only people playing this game in you know Tampa. And it's yeah, sad. it's but, funny. Uh, um, it's it's so weird when you like you love something like like usually with video games too, and then you meet somebody else who's way way. It's like somebody you really don't like, but they're also super into the mm-hmm. thing you're into. And it kind of makes you hate that you like whatever yep. you like. Like I'm a uh, normal person. The Dark Souls remaster that's coming out soon. Oh, boy. I There's this guy at my work that I can't stand. Oh, no. But he learned my name somehow, and he, he, kept, he keeps asking me about it and, like, wanting to play. Are you fucking kidding me? He's like, me? are you going to play? Are and I'm like, me? I don't know. <laughs> that, that happened with one of my students where it's like they were talking about um, – they just get know. so into it. They're, they're way they're, too obsessed. Yeah, they, they, they were talking about, like, games that they like on Steam. And they're like, because they saw I had Steam one time. Oh, no. And they're like, what games do you play on Steam? I'm like, Binding of Isaac. And they're like, no. And they are obsessed with the Binding of Isaac the same way we are. But I'm like, this kid is like the one kid that I don't want to identify with ever. <laughs> it was so upsetting. <laughs> so upsetting. Anyway, 
Because uh, sometimes Let's... it's just that's what their life is. I like know. Finding of Isaac. That's what defines that kid, probably. <laughs> so so that's the only exciting. thing he's got going on. So, yeah, and then from <sighs> then on, like he would do like these inside jokes with me, like from Binding of Isaac that I just never got to. Yeah, and you're like, I don't understand what you're talking about. <laughs> like, it's from Binding of Isaac. I'm like, I have yeah. clocked maybe, um, I don't know, 50 hours in that game. He's and like, I still oh. don't know and what the fuck you're talking about. He probably has like about. 900. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Ridiculous. Anyway, let's get to this film because oh, it's so it funny. is a horror movie. A film. Oh, yes. <laughs> it is called The Ritual. It was the Ritual! Last year, I'm assuming, because it was released this year, 2018. Yep, 2017. Now, as spoken off air, uh huh. this film is the perfect film for making fun of the title in the efforts, or in the same way that you would for, you know, Dr. Strange Thug or How I Learned to Stop Carrying. Well, Thug. let's hear it. The Ritual, colon, or... How I Learned to Forget About Survivor's Guilt and Love the Moose God. <laughs> or Norwegian Moose God, excuse me. Oh, man. Okay, so the ritual. Um, or my first impressions. how I forgot to... Whatever. <laughs> I can't do I can't it. can't remember. <laughs> I like this movie. I, I thought it was pretty fucking great. For a horror film for 2018 to come out this strong... Yeah. I don't it, it, it's going to be difficult to be better than this one. Yeah, and this movie has a 6.3 on IMDb really? and a 58 meta score on Metacritic. Why? This film was fantastic. It this deserves, movie was like, so much fun. Minimum Here's 70. why I like it so much. It is classic fucking monster movie. Let's get some people together and we're all going to die like that shit. Like that, everyone knows why we're here and 100% <laughs> And we're going to talk about this. I don't want to say we're going to talk about it a lot, but the one thing that sings true in this film, because, you know, we're, you and I are big advocates of, um, uh, don't show just, you know, don't show too much in horror films because it's yeah. just going to ruin mm -hmm. the effect. This Hide film's the sound design yeah. for that hidden monster mm -hmm. is so well done. It, mm -hmm. I was, I haven't been scared at a horror movie in a long ass time. I was yeah. I was watching in the middle of the fucking day. It was bright in my like there was a glare on the TV. It was annoying to see the glare, but I was horrified by it just yeah, because yeah. of the fucking sound design. It was pretty scary. And then whenever you get to see the monster, you're like, "This is fucking awesome." It's the coolest looking thing ever, right? It's fucking rad as shit. Okay, here's why I like these types of films. I've probably said this before. Here here we go again. Um, I like it when a movie can build its own lore yeah. of, of like a monster from the ground up and you start following those rules. Think about it when you first learned about Dracula. Like, mm -hmm. how old were you? I don't know. You're learning about Dracula. Like, well, what is this guy? He can like turn into a bat or like you got to invite him in and, and garlic hurts him. I was going to say, that's my favorite and, one. My favorite, you know, my favorite aspect of vampire lore is they're not allowed to come in your house unless you say so. That's cool. That's <laughs> fucking rad. That's really neat. And I that like that because that you, they're like, supernaturally powerful, but yet they have these rules they have to what's follow. What's that one movie so that, humans can that, that, fight you, them. that you got me onto? Because I hated it at first, but then after you explained it the way that you understood the lore to be built up, like it, it had to do with photographs and ghosts. And like the ghost was like this really weird green spirit thing. Oh, I don't remember. I'm not sure. But you, like, it, you liked it for that same reason. I for, it's the yes. old 70s film. I don't remember what it was. Oh, yeah, it's not ringing any bells. Sorry. Um, but yeah, I like shit like that. Oh, speaking of ghosts, because sometimes they can do that. I think we reviewed a movie before where it's um, it's like the monster or entity is so powerful. There's just no way for any of the main characters to fight it. And that makes your movie watching experience boring. Yeah. You're, so that element of can the monster be defeated? And if you want to make usually a good movie... Because you want your main characters, who are usually humans, to be able to at least stand a chance or be able to get out of whatever situation they're in. You want us. You want like a, um, uh, a, a, a like a balancing act of can they succeed? You know, and like mm -hmm. a carrot on a stick kind of a thing. Like yeah. you want them to almost at least think they can survive. If there's well, no if hope, then why are you does watching that so fucking well? Yeah, yeah. because. Just the tribulations that the the main character has to go through in order to get out of this. Yes. So basically, the monster is a god. 
So how how do you defeat a god? You can't do yeah, that. And he goes after him at one point with a fucking shotgun or a rifle. And you're like, this mm-hmm. isn't going to fucking work. So I thought it, it was going to amp yeah. up to that. Mm-hmm. But the way he gets out of it is the smartest way they could have handled it. I, it, I yeah. love it so much. It was fucking genius. And a, oh, the lore, like I said, that they build with this is so neat. Like, I would love to see a sequel to this. Like, where they come back and try to hunt yeah. the god or something. <laughs> like, or he, like, he a brings like group a group of people. Yeah, he brings like an expedition to to specifically go and kill this thing. Now, I'm going to drop a term on you. All right. Um, from film school, the mise-en-scene. So oh. set design, everything in front of the camera is what mise-en-scene mm-hmm. is. So setting. Phenomenal. So mm-hmm. second to sound, the mise-en-scene, and specifically whenever the main character, I, I need to pull him up. Um, uh, the main character's name Luke. is Luke, yeah, and he's played by Raph Spall. So Raph's, R- Rafe Spall, or Raph Spall. Yeah, Rafe. He, you w- would know him. He's one of the Andes from Hot Fuzz. He's the one that goes, murder, murder. Or no, no, that's the <laughs> other one. He's one, no, he's is the he? one that goes, Farmer's Mums. That's the, that's the one. He was, oh. he was just a minor character in Hot Fuzz, but okay. he like, played that so well. So yeah. basically what happens is these group of four guys, they're all trying. Is it four? No, it's five. It's five guys. One of them dies. So, Burgers and fries. Yeah. <laughs> Burgers and fries. <laughs> five guys, burgers and fries. One Please of them dies. Thank you. One five guys, dies. burgers and fries. One of them dies. Five guys, burgers Eating and fries. Eating the pies. One of them dies. Eating the pies. All right, so. Eating the pies. They're all talking at a pub one night. It takes place mm-hmm. in England, or they start off in England. And so it's a British film. And, like, you know, yeah. British films, I think, we don't give them enough love. Almost every British film I watch is just phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Uh, one quick thing, too. I will what? say, these characters that get killed off one by one, they're not annoying. And no. they're actually fun they're to be around absolutely. and learn and the about the drama them. that builds between them is real and raw. Yes. And you identify with exactly what they're feeling. Yeah. Because like, the, just mm-hmm. the emotions in this, everybody's experienced. And it's just it's uh, so great. Anyway. Yes. So there's this one character. What is his name? Um, so you have Luke, Robert, who is the main character. Basically, yeah. you have Robert Phil, is who is um, I like he's like an Indian guy, I guess. Um, he, I don't really know. He doesn't really have much of a personality. He's just kind of like he's one of the guys hanging out. He's the one um, that's so easily susceptible. He uh, he has oh, no him? idea okay. what's going that's on. That's a good way to describe it. Yeah, he's easily susceptible. He has no idea what he's going on, but he just fucking runs with it, and he's yes. freaking everybody out because he's running with it, and they yeah, don't want to. He's the guy run who with goes it. with everything. Yeah. Um, you got Hutch, who is like the leader kind of guy. He's like always trying to remain calm and be in control. But they do such a good job of showing that he's he's saying these things like, hey, we got to stick together. We got to do this. And then he'll just stare off into the distance. And mm-hmm. you're like, oh, he is so fucking afraid right yeah. now. Yeah, like you can wonderful. see how fucking scared he is when he's trying to maintain composure. Then you have um, Dom, who is like the wise ass who uh, he's, he's like a big complainer. Mm-hmm. He, he kind of gets people into trouble and he, he can be kind of a baby sometimes. And I, I think there might be Robert. one more care. Oh, uh, Robert. So um, you can talk about, do you remember what so, happens with Robert in the beginning? Yeah. They're, they're all in the pub and they're talking about what they want to do for their um, vacation. That's coming yes. up essentially. And they're mm-hmm. all like kind of arguing about it in, in the friendly, like we're getting drunk way. Yeah. And Robert's big idea is like, why don't we go backpacking in Norway? Yeah. And everybody's like, are you fucking serious? Like, that that's who would want to do that? Essentially. Maybe we at wall with Norway. Maybe we at wall with Norway. <laughs> anyway. So, he, he, like, he's the only one that's up for it. And then they leave the pub and they're talking about it. And then they end up going to a liquor store. Yep. And then Luke's like, hey, do you guys want to get something? He's like, no, I got to go to school in the morning because yeah. I guess one of them is a teacher. And so mm-hmm. only Robert and Luke enter this grocery store. Or this liquor mm-hmm. store. And then there's nobody in there and everything's fine and they they're talking about why it would be so good to why it would be yeah. so good to go to Norway. I, yeah. Now Robert... I can't fucking think about anything but Norway. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, I was it. wondering when El Capitan was gonna <laughs> use his pop gun. <laughs> this fucking podcast can just be us talking about the thing and how great it is. Yeah. Every show. I love that movie. Maybe we had war with Norway. I don't want to stay out here anymore. I want to come back inside. Put it down, Gary. You don't want to hurt anybody. He ain't tying me up. Then I'll have to kill you, child. I watched it recently again to show my girlfriend. Oh, she never uh, seen it. She liked it. 
No, oh. she thought it was pretty graphic, and I'm like, yeah, this movie is kind of fucked it is up. Fucked up. <laughs> John so, Carpenter. We're so we're thing. so desensitized to it, but if oh, you yeah. watch it with somebody who's not used to seeing that, it's pretty fucking. There's a lot intense. of animal violence in that yes. movie too, and she's like, no, oh, the puppy. So much. Like, oh, you're right. But it's so good. It's wonderful. I love it. Yeah. Don't tell her I said that, but I love it. <laughs> um. Anyway, you have. So Robert Rob, is yeah, there. He's talking about how great it would be to go, and um, Luke is test himself. Yeah, he's 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 ta- he's trying to convince Luke because Luke is going to be the one that sways everybody else. Luke is kind of the one that everybody you know listens to. I guess is his archetype. He's the no, one no, that can identify that's with everyone. Hutch is like the leader character. Well, Luke is, is like Luke? the main character. Well, yeah, but then what archetype would he fit? He he's he's basically we we're. Uh, we're taking this journey through him. We kind of know him as the lead main character. Right. I, I mean, I don't know if he really has like an archetype, I guess. He's more cautious, I guess, from what I yeah. can see. Okay. So anyway, while they're in there, they find out that this, this store is in the process of getting robbed. Yes. And, and this blew me away. This, I was like, this what was is going on? fucking insane. Because it, I was not expecting it. It happens so slow, but so fast at the same time. I love mm-hmm. this so much because they come out. So the robbers come out and are talking to the guy. So there's two owners of the store. They're talking yes. to the one owner of the store. The other one is like beat up behind the counter and they realize her at first. So they see her first. And like, they just the see her on the ground yeah. with like a black eye. And they're yeah. like, what and the, fuck, like, is what the fuck is going on? And then the <laughs> robbers come out. And then in this really weird where I'm saying it's like it's super long. It's like just, it's just an interval of 10 seconds. But – it's long enough to where you're like, why aren't they being noticed yet? And then Silence, you realize, yeah. yeah, you realize that they are being noticed, but um, Luke manages to get behind. Like, so he's able to think faster than Robert and Robert just kind of standing there still in disbelief. Yeah. So Luke is in, has managed to hide within 10 seconds. Yeah. And now Robert is like in plain sight of the robbers. Standing out in the open because he didn't know what to do. Exactly. And then uh, those those uh, crazy robbers come out. And they're like, "All right, give me your wallet, you know, give me mm-hmm. your give me your watch." And he's like, "Okay," he's giving him the stuff. And he's like, "Give me your wedding ring," and he's like, "I can't give you this wedding ring. It's too important to me." He's like, "Give me this," and they're like out of their mind, cracked out. Yeah, robbers. And then while he's arguing with it, uh, him, Luke is hiding there. He doesn't know what to do. He's like, mm-hmm. if he comes out, he's going to get killed. But he wants to help his friend, but he, you know, he doesn't know what to do. And, and the guy's like, "I'm not well, no. going to give you this ring." And, and he and he contemplates coming out because he's at the, he had grabbed a, a vodka bottle he was about to buy, yeah. And then he's holding the vodka bottle in his hand like it's a weapon. Mm-hmm. So you can tell that he's about to do something. But right as he's about to make the move, Rob looks back at him, and the second guy, he's like, "He said, give him your wedding ring." And he comes up and just bashes this guy's skull open. Was it a knife or was it a? He rock? slices him. So it's a knife in the face with a machete. Oh my god, it's crazy! From the base of his skull and the down ed- to his neck. The editing there. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> And he goes down. <laughs> they showed enough of it to be like, oh, God. But they showed – they didn't show that much to where you were super grossed out. But you like – oh, my God. It was really well cut. Uh, it was so so his buddy was on the ground. They were, they were stealing that shit from him. And then the robbers run out. And then it just kind of cuts away. And then the rest of the film is about that moment with him. Yeah, exactly. With Luke and what he could and could not have done. And it's like how his friends – some of his friends blame him for not yeah. helping. And other ones so, feel more sympathetic. You cut to them in Norway yep. six months later after he's dead, and they're going to have you know their memorial service for him yes. where he wanted to go. So he was really the only one that wanted to go to Norway 100%. Yeah. Everybody else was super reluctant, but they decided to just, in his honor, yep. go anyway. Which is cool. That's a so good that's, idea. I know, and that's what for sets up this, this, this is how we're going to be in this insane place. Uh-huh. And it gets fucking batshit crazy, and it's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. So they're, they're there, and they get up. They hike for a really long time. And they get up on the top of this mountain, and uh, they set up a little, almost like their own ritual. And they all get in a circle, mm-hmm. and they have a picture of him and his favorite things and his watch and all this other stuff. And they, they just start saying a few words about him. And then they all drink from this flask that he owned. And then after everyone drinks, it's funny, because uh, Hutch... He he starts to pour out the the alcohol, but it takes a really long time. Mm-hmm. I don't know if this was done as a joke, 
But like people were like eyeing the alcohol, like oh, he's he's this so oh, much yeah, alcohol that was, that's going that, on the that ground. That kind of pissed me off because normally it's like <laughs> you you pass it around and then you like do one for your homies and it's just a shot. But he literally empties the he entire pours flask. It all out. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. what the fuck is your problem, man? Well, everyone was kind of like, oh, that's not alcohol. Because all they talk about is wanting to get drunk and go to the pub yeah. and be lazy. Like that's yeah. all, that's all they joke about. <laughs> and like I said, their, their chemistry is really good. Mm-hmm. You can really tell that these guys are good friends. And if this movie was like a bunch of shitty teenagers that were all unlikable assholes, this movie would be completely different. Yeah. Completely different. Because I wanted these guys to win. Yeah, you wanted, I wanted somebody win. to but win. But then also there's <laughs> some degree, like with slasher films and all these teenagers getting murdered, just the fact that they're teenagers, the more you age, the less those films, they, they, they lose their degrees of believability. Uh-huh. Right. This was a horror film designed for people in our age range, our demographic. Ah, I see that. I can see that. Because you care legitimately for them. And even though, you know, the, there's just a fantastical beast that's at work here. And where to find them. Yes. Yes, of course. <laughs> even though that's happening and it's, it's you have to suspend your disbelief for that aspect of it. Mm-hmm. Everything else is working in favor of what yes. your belief system is because that's who you identify with. So I would yes. say that this is a horror film for people who are our age. Like and Michelle you're Lovelace. rooting for the the main characters, not for the monster, which is usually the case in mm-hmm. a movie like this. Yeah. And I, I, I can see the merits of both. Like, sometimes it's fun to be like, oh, all these characters are shitty. I want the monster to kill them all. Let's go. <laughs> right. But an overall film like this is more enjoyable if the characters are likable. Like in, like, Return of the Living Dead. That had, that had a good mix of, like, shitty punk teenagers and adults. Mm-hmm. That kind of, like, both of those groups kind of met together to try to survive. And I think it was it was um, done a lot better than, say, I don't I don't know, some of these other fucking... Like House of Wax, fucking shitty, <laughs> uh, you know. So yeah, and they, so they they do their ritual, mm-hmm. and they're all like, "Okay, now we got to get back to the lodge." And they can see the lodge from where they are, but one of their friends, Dom, who is the complaining asshole, he falls and hurts his leg of pretty bad. And they all are giving him shit. You're like, his leg is probably not as bad as he says it is, but. Um, we got to get him a walking stick and we got to baby him a little bit or he's not going to want to fucking go. And he, he keeps making them stop while they're moving. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to think whose idea was it? I think it was Hutch, the leader guy. He's like, hey, um, why don't we try to go through these woods? Because we can see the lodge from here. Mm-hmm. And if we take these, we take these woods, we'll be able to get there by the end of the night. Instead of taking like almost a day or whatever to get back. So they're like, all right, let's 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 go do it. And then as soon as they said we're going to cut through the woods, and I'm like, bad idea. Yep. <laughs> the woods, you can get so lost in the fucking woods. I'm like, I hope oh, they have a compass or something. Because you can get lost in the woods so just, easy. Just even, even the fucking camp. Like, there are so many scenes where the camera is just standing still and slowly zooming into the trees. And the trees are so close together that just looking at it, sitting on your couch, yeah. you get lost in the fucking uh-huh. woods yourself. It's yeah. wonderful. Yeah, there's a few times where the characters would spin around in a circle, and I'm like, oh, you're lost. There's no way you'll find out where you're going. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as you spin in a circle in the woods, you're like, nope, you're lost. You'll never know which way to fucking go now. And... um they have a compass, but they act like the compass isn't working very well. Mm-hmm. So at first I thought Hutch was leading them into the woods with a broken compass because he was like tapping it going like, oh, this compass, I don't know. So I'm like, is the compass working? What the fuck? But they do. They just start going in the woods. They're having fun. You know, they're still kind of joking around. And then um, I believe they get to a point where it starts to rain really, really hard. Mm-hmm. And they find this cabin oh, in the woods. Oh, and here is where the shit meets the fan. This, like, <laughs> shit meet fan <laughs> exactly like it, you know it, the, see this is this is a good example of a horror film classic so when my biggest complaint with the 2017 version of it was it was zero to fucking hundred in the first five minutes but then it yeah. plateaus and it doesn't go anywhere this yeah. film it was zero to 100 with the fucking robbery scene mm-hmm. and then it has a scale of a thousand <laughs> because there's just so much insane shit that happens as soon as they get to this cabin. Uh, so yeah. the first red flag is like they, they, they see all these um you know weird Nordic carvings, carvings that are runes. just like just runes in these trees. They're like, okay, yeah. Uh I want to know what the fuck this means, but they don't know because they don't speak Nordic. Yeah. 
So they go in the house, they start investigating it, and they are trying to make a fire. And one of them goes upstairs to just, you know, find the extra room. And in this extra room, uh-huh. is it is it Phil that does it first? Or is it Hutch um, who, that does it first? Who goes upstairs? Yeah. I I think it's uh, Phil goes upstairs. So there. Phil goes upstairs, and then he sees this homunculus thing with no head. Oh, it's That's... so fucking cool. It's like a per- person-sized um, uh, doll that's made out of twigs, and its hands have horns now, taped to them, is it, <laughs> which is, is fucking it, crazy. Is it person-sized at first? Because I feel like this, the second time that you see it, it grew to be uh, much bigger. No, I think it was that size. Okay, I don't think it so got that, was, that was kind of fooling me. But then there's the one point where you see, like, its feet, and its feet are made out of, like, duck Chicken feet. legs. Yeah. yeah which, it's crazy. It's so fucking ridiculous. Yeah. It was out of control. Um, but they're like, when Phil sees that, he's like, guys, everyone get the fuck up here right now. Because they it's were witchcraft. breaking some yeah. of the furniture for firewood. Yeah. Oh, they just broke into someone's cabin, by the way. Yeah. And they're kind of like, oh, it's abandoned. I'm sure it's fine. And they're like, really? It was okay. locked, though. Like, yeah, somebody was trying in. to keep people out. Yeah. I mean, it's a little dusty, but come on, Jesus. So they all go up there and see it. And they're like, yeah, this place is fucked up. And then they're like, all right, let's go to, let's go to bed. <laughs> so they're all like, oh, this place is really scary. Okay, let's all go to sleep. So and um, here's where the visuals boy. get really. So if, if you like looking at Norway or the Norwegian countryside, this, the visuals in this film are just awesome. But here's where the visuals get super cool and creative. So they all go to bed and Luke wakes up. Because he sees light outside. He's mm-hmm. like, what the fuck is that? And it's like, it's not just any light. It's like, aliens are going to come abduct this light. Just shining yes! in through the fucking door. Yeah, that door. was so fucking cool. Yeah. And then he opens the door. And as he opens the door, he sees fluorescent lighting and liquor store shelves. And I'm like, what the fuck? And as yeah. he walks out, you uh-huh. see the store shelves first. Or you see them still. But the floor is not tile. It's still the forest Grass. floor. Yeah. And the grassiness. And then as he keeps walking through it, it's just it's just so well blended between oh, liquor store so shelves deep. and then trees. And like, oh, and this happens so many times in the film. Do you think that's flashes. all CG? No, I think they actually built that set. Really? Yeah. Man, it's fucking cool. It, there's, I don't, like, I would be surprised if it's CG. If it's CG, it would be a little disappointing, but still, it looked it, so awesome. But it looked really good, so, it did. I mean... And that's why I think it was practical. So they, like, very quickly, in the middle of Norway, if it was filmed in Norway, they just set up all these fucking elaborate fluorescent light sets. Yeah. Just so they can get these amazing-looking scenes. Now, I've seen I've seen scenes like this before, but this was You've by seen far, scenes? Yes, I've seen scenes where okay. it's like they're blending, <laughs> you know, past and present together in yes. creative ways. But uh-huh. this was by far the coolest looking one because of the trees and just the yeah, fluorescent lights and like how neat. like just the, the the contrast between the dark forest and the the cool glow of the fluorescent light. Mm-hmm. Cool and as opposed Dan, to warm. That's why I'm gonna open my own rainforest themed convenience store. It would be awesome. I would go to that con- I would drive fifty miles to that convenience store. I'm gonna call it the Super Tropical and We'll have uh, bananas and ho hos. What do you think? <laughs> Why not banana flavored ho hos? Um, I mean, sure. If you wanna, if you wanna invest, maybe we can. Why make not that happen. penetrate the ho hos with the banana? So you get all mm. the cream out. You get to lick the cream off the banana, but then leave the okay. banana in the ho ho. So all it's right. banana filled ho hos. Okay, I feel like we're going down a different path where I have to bring people into a back room with like a bunch of beads. There's like a lot of beads that like block them off. I'm like, oh, this is for our uh, banana filled cream ho ho customers. This way, I thought you were going to say, <laughs> I feel like we're going down a path in which I'm no longer required to have this tropical thing that's set in a convenience <laughs> store in the forest. But now we're 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 down the path of how we're going to sell our product of banana. Oh uh, yes, yeah. Because <laughs> that's what I took out of it. That would to be the most important thing, not the fact that your interesting locales are cool. No, I don't care about that. <laughs> I'm more concerned about these ho hos. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah. So yeah, that scene is amazing. And then he he walks out, and I think maybe he sees his friend, his dying friend. He's freaking out. And then when he wakes up, this just like rush of air 
comes through and is like going away from him and it's breaking all of the trees and the mm-hmm. branches and making this path. So like a path that was not there before that some, some kind of weird wind monster from tag, tag. The, the, that movie <laughs> tag that we watched fucking cut this huge gap uh. where a path is now. And he's got this mark on his chest like he was in Fist of the North Star and <laughs> he got his fucking girlfriend stolen. I don't I forget what happens in that. When he fucking puts his hand in him, you know, and yes. he makes the the Big Dipper in his chest or whatever the oh fuck it is. God. He's got that, basically, if you can think of that. So Kenshiro is really upset at this point. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I have uh, vengeance. So that happens to him. He's like, holy shit. So he turns around and runs back into the cabin. Everyone else, all his other friends are freaking out because they're having their own terrible dream. And this is what's so fun about this movie. Is you don't get to see anybody else's dream. but it's like No, Luke's. you only you only see what's happening from the perspective of Luke. And that's why I'm like, well, he's the main character. Of course, he's not going to die. Maybe to the very end. We don't know. But we're experiencing this through but him. But that, like. Okay, keep yeah. saying. I don't want to interrupt. And you. it's and it's really neat how like these other characters are freaking. Like one guy pisses his pants. The other guy's like up in a corner, like mm-hmm. screaming a woman's name. We find out it's his wife. And then he goes upstairs, and fucking Phil is up there completely naked, and he's praying to that weird effigy thing, and he doesn't even know why he's doing it. And he wakes now, up, and he's like, "What is happening?" <laughs> I feel like what you're saying that like you, you you say it's it's so cool that ha- that happened, right? Yeah. So I feel like that's another reason why this narrative works so well. It's a mystery. Is because it's a mystery because you are anchored to this story through one character. You 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 are not an omniscient audience member. Yeah. You only get one thing, but you know that these people are behaving just I feel like they're they're freaked out more than Luke. Yeah. Because Luke, it's explainable. Like, we can easily explain it saying, like, he's still suffering from survivor's guilt. But what Uh the fuck is everybody else freaking out about? Yeah, exactly. And then he hides the mark on him for a while. Mm -hmm. Because he doesn't want to freak everybody else out. And and (laughs) once they all gather themselves, they're like, we all just had a bad dream. Everything's fine. We all had a bad dream. (laughs) This is why this film, like, the more I think about the narrative. All of you? The narrative, the story of this film is Uh super smart. Because everyone in this film is, like, in, we learned that they're pretty much all mad at Luke for, you know, not doing shit whenever. Yeah, to one degree or another. To, to yes. one degree or another. But they're sad. But this whole film is about how they do the same exact fucking thing in that yep. moment. Where they, they, they don't know what to do either, but they're so hypocritical towards him. And mm-hmm. that is magical. How Because you don't know what you would do if you were in a convenience store with your friend and you were hiding. Like... And if you maybe if you try to help him, you get killed too. They're all upset, understandably. Yeah, they're kind of upset with the uh, the scary, the scary dream. And I uh, I feel like if that happened to me and a group of uh, friends of mine, we'd probably all act the same way. Like, because how do you believe in the super- supernatural so easily? You know, yeah. no one's in a movie is going to be like, oh, it's definitely. And uh, there was a tension about that magic. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, there was a tension about that. It's like. Th- this is not real. Like Phil mm-hmm. is the only one that's like, this is witchcraft. We're, we're yes. freaking out, but he's making everybody else feel super uncomfortable because they are traumatized by whatever uh-huh. they saw in their dreams. Yes. And they don't want to believe that it is anything supernatural. They just uh-huh. want to get to the fucking pub and drink. It and away. and it's, it seems like, yeah, absolutely. And it seems like Phil kind of knows what witchcraft looks like more than them. And they also saw a dead goat. In a tree that we didn't mention. It was which a deer. Was fucking cool. Oh, is a deer? Yeah, it's a reindeer. I Gosh. Think. It was eviscerated and hanging from the tree. And it was and awesome. Bleeding still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, um, yeah, this is pretty fresh. Let's get the fuck out of here. <laughs> and at that point, you're like, uh oh. Yeah, that was nuts. So what happens next, Dan? Because I can't remember. So they decide to leave the cabin. Yes eventually because it takes them forever to try to figure that out because they're mm-hmm. like you know we should go we should keep heading southwest do the shortcut or we should go back the way we came and just take the long way around because well dom the fucking asshole guy who hurt his leg says oh i want to follow this path there's a path right here it's mm-hmm. man-made but that was the path that the fucking monster made yeah so he starts following that and i'm like oh this is bad <laughs> so they're mm-hmm. heading right towards where the monster is i'm like oh my god um, 
so yeah, they they start heading that way for a while, and they start having. Um, I think this is where they get into like Dom gets into a fight with Luke about well, him no. leaving him, Dom, his friend, Dom, the um, convenience store. He. Dom, Dom calls him out. He's like, well, you no, should before have he even saved calls him out, like Dom like, is he's in agony and they have to set up camp, right? Yeah. So at one point, I don't know, there's this really awesome scene where where Luke goes ahead and he's just just looking ahead, just trying to scout. Oh, the he area. runs up the ridge just yeah, and to then see he if just, he can see uh, the cabin. To, to see if he can see anything. And it's just another lodge, field I mean. of fucking trees. Yeah. And then endless. he's just looking at something and it looks like a hand. Uh-huh. He's, he's just kind of like just kind of staring at it, and they do a lot of shot reverse shot with it, and then the fucking hand moves, and he's like, "Oh fuck!" And then he just runs away. Oh, it was so yeah, wonderful. that was really cool. And that's when he tells them, like, "Yeah, I got attacked." He shows them the mm-hmm. the cut on his chest, and he's like, "There's a fucking monster out there. <laughs> There's something out there." And they 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 you know everyone's in disbelief. Like, how do you believe something like that? And um. Yeah, they get into their big fight, and that's when Luke kind of realizes some of his friends haven't forgiven him, and they think mm-hmm. that it's partially his fault, which is kind of bullshit. Yeah. That's that's fucking messed up. Um, so they get into a fight, and then they, uh, they do eventually camp because they cannot get out of these fucking woods. Yeah. They're kind of lost. So they're camping in the woods now by themselves, and nobody stands watch. How do you not have somebody... <laughs> Stan, watch. What the fuck? After everything that's happened? How do they all go to sleep? You know, they do, though. I didn't think about that. Those and motherfuckers. That makes a lot of sense, that question. Yeah. <laughs> At least Luke would not go to sleep, right? <laughs> the leader of the group, sure. But I think the monster's powers, he can make you hallucinate without you even sleeping. Is what yeah. it seems like. Yeah. So it almost doesn't matter. Because it seemed like Luke was awake and then... He saw crazy shit anyways. Like, he saw... Who's the first one to go? The convenience store again. It's Hutch, the, the leader. H- yeah. That's, that was one of my favorite parts of the film. It's like, you, Hutch is established as this leader guy, and yeah. the first one to go is him. Well, he's that, that pillar of stability, like, because everyone thinks, you know, if he's leading us, we're all fine, and we're all just going to follow him, and right. we'll figure it out. Once he's gone, it's fucking free-for-all. Crazy time, you know, and now, and the way they find him is it crazy. It's, it's this stretch of like twenty to thirty minutes where they, or maybe it's even less than that, maybe fifteen minutes. This is where the sound design is so important because uh, they're no longer in the cabin. They've set up camp and they're getting picked off one by one, but we never see what it is that's picking them off. Yeah, we only see them reacting to it and just looking around at the darkness of the woods, and it is <laughs> yeah. horrifying. Yeah, it's fucking nuts. Just, so they all have crazy dreams again. They all have crazy dreams again. But I just want to say one more thing about the sound. It's just like yeah, sure. The, the the guttural growls that you hear and just like just this monster. It's kind of like you know the first time that we heard the T Rex roar in um, uh, uh, Jurassic Park. How they had to use mm-hmm. lions and whales and like different yeah. things to just make this perfect dinosaur scream. This has some of the most unique monster type sounds I've heard in a long time. Yeah, they're pretty and, good. And they are creepy and they are wonderful. Mm-hmm. And they, I think they complement what this guy looks like. So whenever we talk about what he looks like, it's, oh, it's so wonderful. Yeah. He is so cool looking. <laughs> so they, um, they lose their friend. They go to look for him. They hear him screaming and they all, the rest of the, all three of them, they get out of their tents. They're all freaked out because they had bad dreams too. And they just start running around the woods looking for him. And then they find him. He's hung up in a tree, eviscerated, too. Oh. Oh, and my it's God. it's fucking crazy. It's fucking... It's it's how you... I forgot about that, too. That's another aspect of the sound design. The screaming that these grown men do mm-hmm. really makes the film even better. So you have the horrifying nature of whatever this fucking thing sounds like. But then Hutch's scream... The leader of the group, scre- like shrieking at the top yeah. of his lungs. I don't want to say like a little girl, but like just in just this this primal state of nothing but terror. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> being able to achieve that level of frequency with his voice yeah. is, oh, uh, it made the uh, it's probably it's out of control. It's probably my favorite part of the film. Just his scream. It's, yeah, it's so terrifying. insane. Because, like, how do they stand a chance if this, if their leader is, you know, 
the bravest guy there is, is Give me that screaming screen. like a baby. We're, we're putting that screaming right here. It's so good. And um, they eventually get him down from the tree, and they they try to bury him. But mm-hmm. that, I would be like, let's get the fuck yeah, out of here. No, I would not have like done that. that. I would be like, I'm Dom running was the away. One. Dom, was Dom the is one a like, fucking dipshit. Yeah, Dom is a dipshit. Because <laughs> Luke is like, we got to get the fuck out. And Dom's yeah. like, no, I'm not going to leave him. Like, this. He's like, mm-hmm. you okay? Yeah. And Phil is basically shut down mentally. He's like mm-hmm. lost his – he's losing his marbles. He's like – he can like barely walk. And um, they all kind of just start stumbling away. They're trying to get away. Now they're just trying to go southwest or whatever I think mm-hmm. is what they wanted to do. Because they're like, fuck the path. Fuck wherever else we were going. We just need to get out of the woods. Let's do it. And they, they're going, they're going, they're going. And I believe they all kind of get separated. I think Phil gets grabbed. Phil gets grabbed. No, it's and, weird. I Like, no. Luke goes ahead again to try to see where he, he – yeah, he goes to the ridge and he's like, oh, I can see shit. Like, yeah. I, I can see where we were supposed to be going. And mm-hmm. he comes back down and they were supposed to be staying still. Like, he was yes. supposed to come back down to see them. And then he sees Phil. He's like, what What are you doing? He's like, oh, I heard something. And then he just gets fucking – by the darkness, just fucking <laughs> sucked in like he a gets, vacuum. A sh- 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 well, it's like because you never see the monster there because it's so yeah. dark and it just yeah. looks like he's just sucked into a black hole of trees. Yeah, it's it was kind of funny because like when they show Phil, he's just got a he's got a light on the tree. He's like yeah. looking at the tree suspiciously. Like I thought we heard something, and he's like, "Whoop, speared it away. Bye bye. <laughs> see you later, Phil." <laughs> yeah, and then there's a a really nice tense moment of Luke like freaking out, and you just hear the monster running around him in circles. Mm-hmm. He's like, That's what, what I'm the saying. Fuck? What the fuck? And then he sees uh, Dom, the little bastard. He's hiding, and he runs up with him, and he's like, okay, Phil's fucking done. Um, Can you run? Yeah, we're going to have to get out of here. He's like, he's like, how's your leg? He's like, it's all right. Because the whole movie, he's been complaining about how bad his leg is. Now, well, you know, and he's now he's about how, how bad okay. it, how it is. And no, his leg is not all right. Because well, Hutch points out, he's like, listen, I thought that Dom's leg was okay, but it's actually getting worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Uh-huh. It's, 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 ah, man, this film is. So now he's like, you got to run, man. We have to yeah, run. Exactly. He's like, but I won't leave you. And, uh, they get up and start running. I'm trying to, oh, I, okay. I do remember what happens. So they run to another cabin that they had passed by before. And cause they, oh, it's funny. Cause they late earlier on when they see that second cabin, they're like, should we investigate? And they're like, fuck no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> They're like, we are not going into this fucking cabin. And even when they see human tracks, they're like, hey, people were here. They they even knew they're like, we should not go meet these mm-hmm. people. The people who live in the woods? No. Because <laughs> they kind of think that it's people already that are yeah. hunting them. So they're like, no, we're not going to go to these people. So uh, Dom and Luke are running, and they get to another cabin. They burst in. They fall to the ground. They think they're safe, and there's this great... Like, the camera angle is, like, upside down and flat on the floor. Yes. And they're so exhausted that they can't get up. And they just – they're trying to look up, but they can't. And they just see these boots walk up to them, and the guy kicks them right in the face. Uh, it was really well done. So they, they both get kidnapped. And Phil, sadly, gets grabbed by the monster and uh, put on a tree. Yeah. <laughs> As you do – I like how the monster is not killing them to eat them or anything. He's just doing it as some weird ritual for him. Yeah. It's like, are you worthy of my gift and, and, and worshiping me? And if you're not, you get to go on the tree. <laughs> I like that a lot. Yeah. Um, and I don't even think they try to feed it at all. It's just like, are you worthy? No, on the tree. And then uh, they're kidnapped now. So they're both trapped by these weird um, village people. We call them the village people. <laughs> and <laughs> they keep singing about the YMCA. I don't know what's going on. They're really excited about it. Uh, and there's an Indian. There's a cop. There's a construction Young worker. <laughs> Do you worship nice, the though. moose? I said, Young man. Young man. <laughs> Throw yourself in the tree. I said. We're going to torture you. 
and then Granny <laughs> will maybe give you some, some water. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, it is water. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, the so an old lady. will explain uh, plot. Uh, uh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. So, um, old lady walks in. She goes up to Luke, sees that he has the scar on him. She gives him some water. She goes up to Dom. He doesn't got shit. And she's like, eh, he's going to die. So they take him upstairs to be tortured. And all you hear is this crazy, mm-hmm. like, it's like undead gasping. Like, mm-hmm. oh, and like it's, zombies. it's fucking terrifying. Mm-hmm. It's so badass. And you're like, what is going on? And then what is just, up there? He's up there screaming. Like, and it's, it's the and scariest it's the thing ever. Moose. You think it's the fucking moose, but it's not. No, it's worse. I think uh, it's it, worse. It is much worse. It's wonderful. <laughs> so, okay, so after this happens, the 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 young woman of the tribe comes in and explains everything. It's like, oh, yes, you have great pain. He thinks you're worthy. Yeah. So we're gonna see what your friend's up to first. Mm-hmm. So they tie Dom up to this little post outside to sacrifice him. While yeah. this is all happening, um. Luke manages to break his hand and get free from his bindings. Mm-hmm. And he goes up, like, well, first he goes to this, like, room where they, they hold all of the people that they kidnap stuff, and he sees all the guns and shit. Yeah. And then he goes upstairs, and there's, like, a a torch that he, he so before he opens the door, because he wants to know what's in there, there's a torch that he gets, and he opens the door, and there's just these congregation of bound undead people yeah like skeletons really just like yeah just skeletons that they're just like bound to chairs and then there's like this big skeleton at the front like he's a pe- priest or something yeah and then what's as... cool though is when he opens the door the chanting and moaning stops yeah everything goes silent yeah so you're like who was making that sound yeah <laughs> like what the fuck but then you whenever you start realizing there are skeletons you're like is oh my god that's the skeletons are you know the ones they're chanting and it's yeah, like, you think he's hearing things, but then all of a sudden they're starting to move. Yeah, they start moving. <laughs> what is happening? And, and they, they start, start screaming. Yeah, oh, and oh, he it's... lights them on fire one by one, just staring at them in in just complete panic. It felt such. I loved it because it was so H.P. Lovecraft. Mm-hmm. Like this seemed like like otherworldly. You know, you're right. Creature. This feels a lot like an H.P. Lovecraft. Like it definitely took a yeah. lot of cues from it was his fiction rad. for sure. I loved yeah. it. But it and wasn't what, set in his lore where you have to mm-hmm. deal with Cthulhu and the Great Ones. It's like this Nordic lore that... And you did know, you get what is, was going on with the like why those people were up there, I think? I think they were the people who were there, right? Yes, they were the first people because yeah. the god, once he picks you, after, like if you have really bad suffering, then he decides, he marks you, and then they have to do the ritual. And the ritual is basically you pledge your life to the stag god and you Uh worship him and he will keep you alive for an extended period, like way longer than your normal life. Right. So those people will probably been around for so long, like hundreds and hundreds of years, but their bodies just started shriveling up to the point where they couldn't move anymore. So they just put them up there. I thought they were like, you know, the, the, like the, you know, like the dark souls type thing where it's like you have an (laughs) effigy. So I thought it was effigies of the people who were actually there. You know I think I mean? those were the first people, so that, and then they makes, got so that old that, that they couldn't sense. move anymore. Like so they just yeah. put them in that room. Yeah, it's so fucking crazy. And then once they get really, really old, then he has to get new followers to keep mm. worshiping him. Because I the like best it. thing about this monster is that he's vain and he wants people to worship him, which is so weird that that's like his main goal. He's like, I want people to do my bidding and worship me. That's what I'm all about. And I, I fucking like that as a motivation. And um. He burns that shit to the ground. <laughs> mm-hmm. like, well, Dom he, had previously said, it's like, listen, I'm not going to make it out of here alive. I want you to get the hell out of here. Tell my wife that I love her. And on your way out, make sure that you light this place up. Yeah. Because Dom has a dream about his wife. He's like, I had a dream that I saw my wife and then I died. And he's like, it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. And, and it, it was a pretty happens. intense scene. Yeah. So when he's tied up to the post outside dom he sees his wife his wife walks out of the no, woods no, before that he hears and sees the trees <clears throat> rustling as if the giant moose god is going to yeah. come out of it yeah and as soon as he's about to be at the edge of the woods a little lady walks out and you're like <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, yeah. of course this is, this is, so is this good. fucking thing in disguise uh-huh so cool and then she walks up to him and then he is 
well, the, for the entire time, like these characters are so good at portraying fear. Yeah. And I'm trying to remember, does he look act afraid whenever he sees his wife or does he seem relieved? He's in disbelief. He's in disbelief. He okay. doesn't understand what's going on. Yeah. And then she puts her hands on his face. And then for a moment, he's kind of like relieved. Mm-hmm. And then it turns into yes. the mouth of the monster. And it like inside the stag's mouth is eyes. Is, yeah. So is like, eyes. <laughs> just a good frame of reference. Everybody has seen Star Wars A New Hope. Um, the little Jawas that operate yeah. the junk ship and their eyes are like little amber beads. Uh-huh. That's what his eyes look like. And now so imagine it's inside the, yeah. the the moose skull. Yes. And all you see are his eyes. And then the moose skull has arms on it. Coming out of like tusks, like oh where the tusks God. would be. It's There's so fucking insane. arms there. Human arms. <laughs> I think he has two sets of them too. It's so crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's yeah, like yeah. a spider it's, it, moose skull. That's how it grabs you and picks you up. Yeah. And it's you're staring at it the whole time. And it, he picks him up, and he gets uh, put in a tree. Yeah. Bye-bye, Dom. you dead now. Mm-hmm. Um, but then the house gets burned down. Uh, there's, a, there's a villager who's, like, trying to talk Luke down. Mm-hmm. He, he's, he's speaking in a different language, but he's like, hey, easy, easy, you know, relax, relax. And then <laughs> Luke is like, fuck off. <laughs> and he and fires he the gun, yeah. and it, it doesn't work. And then the villager doesn't even try to rush him. He still tries to talk him down. He's like, dude. You gotta stop. You know, he's like trying to get him to stop. He he reloads the gun and shoots him anyways. And I thought that was kind of interesting. I'm like, are they playing around with the idea of what happened at the convenience store there? Of like, what what would you do in that situation? I don't mm-hmm. know. It's kind of a whole interesting thing. But he, <laughs> oh, I forgot. He punches the old lady in the face. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> we laughed at that pretty hard. <laughs> he sees the old lady. She's about to say something. He just goes bam. In the face. But then, so, so the uh, the one who so divulges funny. the moose god lore to him is yes. being devoured by the moose god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Essentially. So does he kill all of the villagers outside when he shows up when the house is on fire, or is, does he just kill that woman? I think he just kills the woman. I think the other ones might be running in they fear just, or something. Okay. Okay. But Luke manages to get it past him, mm-hmm. and as the moose god picks the woman up for a second time, he turns around and takes aim at this thing like a rifle's going to do anything and shoots yeah, it. Yeah. And then the moose guy notices. And he's like, oh, shit. Oh, yeah. So he starts running away. And in Gosh. this awesome scene, the moose god catches up to him. So he flashes back into this convenience store. He's running through it. So yeah. it's the, the convenience store where it's like, you know, convenience store and trees. So mm-hmm. he's running through that. And then the moose god is right behind him the entire time. And the moose god crashes through this this um wall of liquor and then just mm-hmm. pummels them to the ground and this is the scene is so good because you know the moose god has chosen him he's he's one of the persons who is chosen mm-hmm. so the whole lore of it is the moose god wants him to bow to you and like we kind of get this thing it's like if you bow to him then you're gonna be fine yeah so the moose god wants him so bad that he keeps stepping on him and smacking him down in the ground to, to make get him sure to he bow. stays down. Yeah. 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 And each time he stands back up. And it's mm-hmm. great. And then he picks up that axe that he yeah. has and fucking slams it right into its head. And I was like, oh, fuck. And guess what? It's a god, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. God chases after him again. But then he gets to a clearing. And the moose god won't go past that clearing. Like, yeah, that's he his, can't that's leave his, the woods. That's his realm. And then... As he's looking at it, so they have the stare off, and then this is Luke, amazing. Luke just has, this is so good. Then just say it. Just say it. It's it's. <laughs> he turns around and sees that the moose god cannot leave, mm-hmm. and the, this this creature just screams this otherworldly sound at him mm-hmm. in rage, and he turns around and just screams back at him as loud as he can, and they're oh, just screaming back and so forth good. at each other. It's oh, so good. It was the best. <laughs> It was so good. And then so, he just walks away. There's that thing where it's like, oh, you know, you have man. this. There's no way he stands a chance against Out it. Out of control. But it's like that that realm thing where it's like he can't go past a certain thing. Mm-hmm. But he still wants to have his comeuppance. Where it's like, mm-hmm. I, I, you know, you just murdered everything that I love. And here you are 
not being able to come after me and just like that 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 moment of desperation and just like defeat but at the same time victory yes it's it's victory. wonderful it's fucking nuts and i love how that movie ends mm-hmm. it ends right there he literally he just starts walking away and the movie's like all right we're done you don't yeah, you don't it, need to see no anything aftermath, else no no epilogue oh it's <laughs> no, so great. i don't want anything yes and i would love like i said to see a sequel to this film where they go back and try to mm-hmm. hunt it that would be neat um, I think they could do a good job while like bringing up new things in the film. But yeah, I, I loved how the monster got into your head and found your worst, like deepest, darkest fears. And if he judged them as worthy, he would mark you and then they would do the ritual. And then if, if you bow during the ritual, then you, you know, you live with the moose God and, and just worship him, but and he'll keep you alive for a super long time. I'm like, that's kind of neat. Um, but yeah, there's a storm. It's a fucking great movie. I don't know what a people. Lovely were. moose god. What are their fucking problems? He was bringing up a very <laughs> handsome village. <laughs> All of them had hair of gold, cause they were from Norway. <laughs> the Aryan race Uh-oh. is there. <laughs> oh, <fuck>. Is there? <laughs> well, I mean, blonde hair, blue eyes, Norway. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I did see that SS uh, <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> band that the Moose God was wearing. <laughs> the Moose God is just wearing an SS Yeah. Band. <laughs> he had goose feet so he could goose step. So he's a real motherfucker. <laughs> it's just the... <laughs> Imagine, like, in Glorious Bastards, Christoph Waltz's character is replaced by the Moose God. The giant Moose God? As he's walking around. The... <laughs> Drinking that, milk that and little... being a weirdo. Yeah. <laughs> Knowing exactly where the people under the floorboards are. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, yeah, this movie was great. I mean, um, I don't know what else, much else we can say about it. it. There's nothing else we can say about it. I loved it. it damn good movie. Um, so I have to assign a film. I'm going to start keeping track. Like, so far, best movie, horror movie, at least, of 2018. Yeah, this movie is fucking great. And it's great. fucking January. So we'll mm-hmm. see where that leads us. So, okay, the next movie we're going to watch is The Babysitter. 2017. I think this is a Netflix original. I think so too. Yeah, it is. Um, when Chloe is that Cole or Chloe? I think it's Chloe. Cole. When Chloe stays, Cole. is it Cole? Cole. It's Cole. Uh, I don't know. Words are fun. He's when Cole stays up past his bedtime, oh, it's is a boy. Yeah, you're right. He discovers that his hot babysitter is part of a satanic cult that will stop at nothing to keep him quiet. Uh oh. Uh, this is a dark comedy horror movie. So, the I mean, looking name at is Mick G. Yeah, hmm. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> this movie is either going to be like really charming and fun, or so bad that it's funny. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think. Yeah, it could be outrageously bad, and we'll have fun making fun of it. But I don't know. We'll see. Um, uh, we haven't had pain in a while, and I want to bring the pain. I don't know. Dark was pretty painful. Well, that was painful in a not fun way. This is going to be right. pain in a fun way. I'm hoping yeah, pain that is digestible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically. So that's about it, man. Shit. I mean, that's an episode right there. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> so I hope this was something, guys. Um, please, uh, find us, uh, where you want to find us. I mean, come on. We're on, uh, Twitter, old boys underscore podcast. We're on Podbean. We're on iTunes. We're on all those things. Leave us a review. Say hello to us. Whatever you want to do. It'd be nice. And, uh, Dan, you have the final word. The moose. It's loose. 